Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. You guys know how much I love coffee. I've mentioned it many, many times. So, I've partnered up with Strava Croft Coffee. You know, this is more than just a good cup of coffee. The Wizards of Strava have infused their coffee with the magical goodness of CBD. Yep, CBD and coffee. And it's awesome. Absolutely love it. So to help support my channel and to keep me motivated for making future content, head over to the website. I've got the link in the video description. And grab some coffee. And if you don't like coffee, then buy some for me. Just tell them to, uh, to mail it to Beefalo Bart. And don't forget to use the uh, promo code BEEFALO20 at checkout and get 20% off your first order. Alright, let's get into this real quick. Uh, I wanted to do a short video and add in something. Now if you play in a standalone window, so far what we've got is our basic save game is running and we don't have the two buttons here working yet. But if we hit play game, we can go in and run around, do our thing. If we want to change our character, we can go to the red guy, we change to red, go to the blue guy, go to blue, and of course white to white. Um, but if you hit the escape key while you're in the editor, it just closes it down. And if we run it in the standalone game, it will simulate you actually running the actual game. So now whenever you're here, we're in our main menu, and we hit play game, and it goes to the new map. We need a way of being able to get back to the main menu or quitting the game or whatever. If we hit escape key, nothing happens. We don't have any way of exiting, which can be a bit of a problem. So that's what I wanted to cover really quickly in this video. So we have to manually close everything. And to do this, it's pretty simple. We're going to go to our character, blueprints, player base. And we have some stuff that we need to clean up. And let's go ahead and grab this guy, change mesh, and we're just going to move it down a little bit. And hit C to put a comment box. And change mesh. And this was our save game check. So we're going to highlight that, hit C, and save game check so that we have them at least organized so when we start moving things around and getting things ready to get organized in here we'll be able to do so so let's jump right in it this is going to be really really simple all we need to do here is keyboard escape so now when we hit the keyboard for escape now you can have this set up for any key you want um, you can also set it up to where it does the same thing with you know, your PS4 controller, Steam controller, Xbox One, Android, whatever button or key press or console, uh, whatever. You can actually set it up to do this same process. And when we press the escape key, we need to create a widget that will pop up and give us a couple buttons that we can resume game or we can go to the main menu or quit game. Now I'm going to do this without nag screens because I hate them. And we already have a widget folder. So let's go ahead and create a new user interface widget blueprint and that's going to be escape underscore menu underscore w so we know that it's a widget. We know what it is anyway but all we need to do is have something pop up in the center of the screen with a couple buttons. So I'm going to come down here to the primitive, or not primitive, the panels. Actually, let's add one little cool effect in here and go to special effects, background blur. And I'm going to put this here and I'm going to anchor this to full screen, change my offset to zero. And I'm going to change the Z order to negative three, whatever. So this will always be behind everything else. 
and we need to change the blur strength. Let's make it 20. So now we actually have a blur of the screen. You'll still see kind of the background of what's going on, but this is going to blur out the rest of the screen and highlight what, what you're seeing on the menu. So the next thing we want is a vertical box. And we don't see it. Because it's always helpful to make sure that there's nothing selected here when you drag it in here. See, it keeps wanting to put it on there. It needs to be on the canvas panel so that we can actually see it. And now we can just drag it over here. And for now, let's just go ahead and make it bigger. Let's just go ahead and give it a real size of 300 by 300. We can change the size as we need to. We want to anchor this to the center. And since it's 300 by 300, let's split the difference here and go negative 150 and negative 150 for our, our positions. That's going to put a dead square in the middle of the screen. Now in our vertical box, we need to add in three buttons. And I'm going to put in two spacers. Let's start with our buttons. Drag it and drop it onto our vertical box. It will put it directly in there. So if we now throw a text on there, we can actually come in here and she next, let's click off everything. We want a primitive spacer. And for now, I'm just going to 20 and 20. We're going to fix that here in just a minute. But now I'm going to select a spacer and this button. And I'm going to copy. Click back on my vertical box and paste. Same thing again. So if we look here, it put one of the spacers in the wrong location. I'm actually going to delete that one anyway. So we have one spacer here and one spacer here. And what we can do with those spacers is fill and fill. We're probably going to need to change the, the vertical height. That's just too much going on there. But let's get it functional and working. The first button we want to do is our resume button. We'll change our text on here to say resume game. And I'm hitting the tab key just to get off of it so it saves it there. The next one we want is our main menu button. We're labeling them so we know what they are. And put in the wrong spot. Main menu button. And just I, I change it over. The text will just make that say main menu. And we'll go ahead and, and add a quit button. Change our text. Quit game. Easy enough, right? So if we go to our graph, we can get rid of these guys. And we need to make sure that that button is named correctly. And that is main menu button. Our one on top is our resume. So we can either scroll down here and unclicked or we can do this. Next will be main menu, unclicked, and quit, unclicked. So this is going to be the simple one. The quit button is going to be quit game. 
Simple as that, right? The main menu button, also pretty easy. Open level. Now, if this is a single player game, we don't have to worry about anything in here. If it is multiplayer, in this block right here, you just type in listen. Alright, so level name. If you don't remember the name of your main menu level, go to your maps. Hit F2, Control C, and then click off of it. And now, you can come in here, change that to the name of your map. So this is going to be our main menu map. That's easy enough. Alright, so our resume button. What we want to do is just make this go away. But when we go into our main menu, whenever it comes up, we need to have our mouse. But when we tell it to go away, we need to get rid of our mouse cursor. So we need to set input to game mode only. Get player controller. So it's going to get a reference to our player's controller. Hence the name, right? And then we're going to set show mouse cursor, leave that unchecked. So that gets rid of our mouse cursor. And then from here, we're just going to remove from parent. And that's what's going to actually make this go away. We'll leave that up in case we need to make some changes. But now, when we press the escape key, we need to create a widget. Since we just created our widget, which is our escape menu widget. We need to get a reference to our player controller. And then we need to add to viewport. So we can actually make it visible. And then after we add it to viewport, we're going to have to do a few more things here. We're going to set input to, we can use UI only. Drag widget to focus over here to here. And then we also need to do our mouse cursor. So we're going to set show mouse cursor and it needs to be true now we can compile and save and let's test it out and see if we forgot anything which I'm pretty sure I did so we hit play now this is playing in standalone that's the only way you're gonna see this if you use the escape key so we have play game, we're in our game, everything's cool, we're running around, doing our thing, and let's change our character to red, and if we hit the escape key, see we get that nice background blur, and we can resume game, and keep on going, that works, hit escape, go to main menu, and it goes back to the main menu again, what happens if we go and play game, we start back here again, because we didn't tell it to save our last known location in our save game. But we are the red character. Let's go to blue. Let's resume game. Main menu. And lastly, see so we, we saved our character. If we hit that, let's hit quit game. And close the program down. So there you go. It's a very, very basic setup to get your escape menu running. And... It works. So, just need to, if we want, we can clean it up. We can actually get rid of some of the height. So, let's actually um, shrink down the vertical box really quickly. Instead of 300, um, we can actually, uh, about like that looks good. So, let's do size of 200 which means all we need to do here is change this to half of that so negative 100 and that'll put it right back in our center again so whatever your size is divide that number in half 
and use the negative reference. So negative 150 by negative 100 because her size is 300 by 200. And that's it. We can compile, save, close, and let's not forget to go into our player and highlight everything, hit the C key, which is going to give us our comment block, and let's call this our escape menu. Compile, save, close, save all. Everything is lovely, everything works, very simple. And that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we will see you soon.